Hey guys, Chris Dick here. This is part 11 of my user services series. And today I'm going to be talking about the open API documentation um, schema filters for Swagger. Now, by modifying the schema, why do I want to modify the schema? Well, there's a lot of reasons that you may want to do this. Um, one specific reason is that um, there are certain parts of objects that you don't want people to actually make changes to or have an interaction with. So the, 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 the less documentation that you give someone, uh, let's call it the better operations you're going to be, you're probably going to have um, a little more security sense around how things are used. So if you're telling someone exactly here's how you want them to be used, um, that's one step in um, raising your level of security on, a, on an API. Obviously, if people don't know about the features, they are less likely to, uh, to be able to use them. So um, when we think about what Swagger does right now, let's go ahead and run Swagger, and we're going to see what it shows for our schema objects right now. Now the two that I'm most interested in here is application user and company. These are the two objects that we've been sort of hinging most of our this web application on. So let's examine what features they actually have. So the ones uh, the features that we really are interested in people using are ID and name for company for example. The user ID is sort of packaged behind the scenes. It's never um, consumed externally by a user. Um, I don't really even need to give someone their own user ID, but I could. Um, in my case, I don't feel that, I, that there's any real need to give someone their own user ID in this sense. So um, I'm also looking at the user object now. One of the problems with with providing the user object is it can um, uh, invoke this uh, cyclic redundancy. Now, fortunately, Swagger has done a nice job at sort of stopping that cyclic redundancy. But what can happen is you can end up with this um, object that sort of spirals out of control in Swagger. So. What I'm going to do, because I'd never actually need to use these parts here, I'm going to remove the user ID and user um, components of the company object. The other thing that I want to look at is the application user. There's only a few parts of this that I actually need to use. Number one, um, I might want to use the email that uh, that perhaps someone has signed up with, for example, uh, and companies. Now, I want to also, um, I'll also keep the ID visible. I know I said down here that we should, we don't need to know the ID, but as you've seen in our application, we're rarely actually exposing the application user to the general interface. So um, the goal ultimately is to keep a lot of this information sort of uh, behind the scenes, but you can see if, um, if, if I had access to this user and I created a company and I, I threw, comp threw the user, a user object in there, there's a potential, if your application perhaps um, is consuming it and you don't realize that it's going to consume any information in this user object, it could actually update the user object and cause some problems. So these are things that I'm looking to avoid ultimately. Um, now, when I say this, you, you're going to make some changes, of course, with your, your own security. You're going to make some decisions that will obviously avoid it. But what I'm trying to do here is mitigate some of the challenges or um, security risks of telling people all about this user app, uh, this application user object. So let's just, um, for the sake of brevity, let's remove some of these things using a schema filter. So how do we do this? Let's go into um, our filters area again in our application. And I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to call this API schema modifier, modifier filter. Okay, so with that, 
Um, just like all the filters, we can extend a uh, an interface. So this one is a schema filter. And once again, we can apply that interface. So with this, this is a very short one by comparison to the ones that we've done before. And um, one of the best part of parts about it is that um, we can provide a lot of, of, of um, modifications in the objects themselves and the in the um, the models themselves so uh, that kind of makes our, our process a lot shorter on the filter side so let's go ahead and get uh, get started on that so I'm going to collect some information here I'm going to ask for the context type Okay, and because we're modifying types all the time here, one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm going to be looking to is uh, reflection. Um, so we're going to look at, we're going to use that general method info check uh, once again. And we've done this before, so we're going to look at get method, uh, method, there we go. And specifically, we're going to look at the swagger. And I actually, before I do that, I have to go over to my swagger example modifier. And I'm going to make some modifications here. So what we're going to do here is add a API schema modifier modifier and I'm actually going to be sending in the the open API schema this time so I'm going to let the entity do a little bit more action on the schema itself and oops I just gotta put a uh, void there because this doesn't actually return anything it just does an action now in the in the interface itself, I don't actually have it doing anything here, but when I implement this into an object, um, it is going to actually uh, accomplish something here. So what I'll do is we'll first look at the company object. And specifically what I'm going to do in the company object sense is I'm going to First off, I'm going to look for the user ID property. And I can do that just by simply looking up properties in the schema. And once again, this is another one of those ones that you'd probably want to shorten with, uh, with an extension of some sort. So in this case, we're going to be looking up the name of and this way we are looking for the company dot user ID and where the where the user ID equals the key so in this case it's X dot key and we'll do our string comparison and string comparison there we go okay um, where these two are equal, so that's uh, that's the first thing we're going to be looking for. And if it actually finds something, in other words, it finds a um, a value in this case. Okay. The other thing that I can do is I, I, I could actually do it something more like this. I could look it up for by keys. So I could just say where X equals that, and then that would bring me back um, whether the uh, the user ID actually comes with comes back with a key. The key is a string. So if it's not equal to null, in other words, it didn't find, if it found something, then it can actually um, use, we can use it to remove that property. So if it finds that, then I'm going to actually get rid of it uh, from the properties. The other thing that I said we wanted to do was also remove user. Now, 
you uh, once again you're going to find that there are um, other faster ways to do this more you more efficient ways to do this but um, what I'm showing you here is things that are a little bit more um, uh, verbose so that you kind of get the idea over time now when I look at uh, my schema filter what I actually have to do is I have to find the method that matches API schema modifier and this method once again has to be a, uh, a public and static method Okay, so we're going to look at so binding flags dot public and static. All right, push that down so we can keep it along the line, same lines there. All right, so if method info is not equal to null, so we actually find that method, we're going to invoke it. So method method info dot invoke no object and um, I'm going to pass in the schema so we'll pass in the schema just like we've said before and we should be pretty much good to go um, if there's an error I'm just going to throw that error right here we're not going to do anything special with it all right, so we should be good on that side. Now the next step I have to do is actually put the turn on the schema modifier here, or the filter here. So we'll do schema filter. We'll add that filter in. And we should be good to go. Let's find out what happens now that we've made these modifications. All right, so let's look at our schemas over here. We'll see what that has done to company. So what you can see right now is we've been able to remove those um, those properties from our schema. Now, again, value is that the end user never knows that there are other features of company that could be modified. So win-win on the side of, uh, of knowing what is possible for uh, for showing the user or even adding something to the schema you can do that as well so the next thing that I want to deal with is that it says that these are nullable now they're not nullable um, they are sort of nullable which kind of kind of implies that uh, so if I'm creating a company I don't need an ID um, but if I'm looking up a company I do need the ID um, if I'm creating a company, this can never be, be nullable, but if I'm looking it up, maybe I don't. Okay, so the general concept here is that I'm going to also make some modifications to the schemas to uh, show this object in a little better light so that it makes a little bit more sense to the user because it's implying right now that everything is nullable and that's not correct as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go down to our schema area and we'll see what happened to our name. All right, so you see that we don't have the nullable feature on this object anymore. Now I'm going to do the same thing for ID. Um, you Again, you can make a choice on whether you want to display this to the user or not. Um, the goal ultimately is that uh, you can make the change and it's quite easy to do so. So I'm gonna make that change for ID and then and of course you can you the best thing is that because the id is part of the i entity interface um, we can actually implement that um, across our, our entire application if we want to add a base entity um, object so um, you could you, you could simply say that you know if, if it's a static you could you could do base entity uh, dot API uh, schema modifier and throw in the schema and say here's a few things that I want you to get rid of um, or change um, on every object that consumes this interface so I've done this here now and let's go ahead and see what happens. 
All right, we'll go down to our schema area, and we should see that both ID and name are modified now. So now this implies that they're both uh, required uh, features for our uh, schema for a company. Okay, let's go check out some other things for our application user and to do that I'm going to copy this code because I'm going to reuse some of the concepts in it and specifically now one of the things that I want to consider here is that because application user and identity user have quite a few properties uh, and I only really need one or two um, I'm actually going to specify a list of properties that only this uh, that are only needed here um, rather than um, rather than taking you know doing one by one through this I'm just going to iterate over a few properties that are actually going to be uh, reused so the properties that I'm going to track are I'm going to call this public properties properties equals and we'll do this here. So we've got name of. So I said I'm just going to keep the ID available. And I'm going to also look for companies. And you know what? I think maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep uh, email available as well. Okay, great. Now, the next step is we're going to iterate over the properties. All right, so we're going to look for properties, schema.properties.keys.where. Okay, and essentially what I'm looking for here is where the the key doesn't exist in my public properties okay properties dot any and once again we're going to do that string comparison x x is coming from the key name and we're comparing y string comparison there we go to list there we go all right so what we could do and it just to shorten this down here I'm going to put this into a list of properties here and I'll just push this down so that we can see it a little better across the screen all right, so we're going to look across all the properties that were not in the public properties list. And so very simply, we can do this properties dot remove and property is the thing to remove. So now you can see all we did was just iterate over that with several of those removal calls. And now when I load up this um, modifier here for application user you should see that that list of properties will shorten down significantly as well all right let's take a look at our schema and we now see that we just have id email and companies now these would generally be the features that you'd want on your application user again your your use case may vary but essentially all you're saying is that i need it i need the id for lookup possibly email for lookup or display on some sort of list or object on your website and of course being able to query within the list of companies that are on your application user all right, so this was a short one today, but this is really valuable in making sure that your API, once again, is more usable for your end users. So really using that user experience is so critical in making your 
API truly usable by as many piece of people as you can. Um, the next video series that I'm going to be doing is going a little deeper because what we're going to do is expand on our objects. We're going to expand on adding features to company and of course adding features to application user. But the goal ultimately is that as you expand your API, you also get more complication in how you're going to feed information into the API. So understanding that is going to be really important in our next steps. Thanks a lot everyone. Remember to like and share and comment as often as you can. Be kind, be loving. Love you all. Bye-bye.